Acapulco Gold. California Kush. Our strains stretch everywhere, too. This is the Cannabis Radio Network. BBC News with Neil Nunes. The opposition leader in Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi, has said she will run the government if her party wins the country's first openly contested election in 25 years. Myanmar's military-drafted constitution bars her from the presidency, but she said she would head the government and the president would work in accordance with her party's policies. Britain says there's a significant possibility that an explosive device brought down the Russian airliner which crashed in Egypt on Saturday. It has suspended all flights to the resort of Sharm el-Sheikh where the plane took off. Egypt says the British action is unwarranted. China's President Xi Jinping is beginning a two-day visit to Vietnam. It comes at a time of tensions between the two countries over disputed territory in the South China Sea. Meanwhile, Taiwan's President Ma ying has said he hopes that his forthcoming meeting with the Chinese president will help reduce hostilities between the two sides. The talks in Singapore at the weekend will be the first such meeting since Taiwan split from the mainland at the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1949. The Constitutional Court in Colombia has voted to give same-sex couples the right to adopt children. It has instructed adoption agencies not to discriminate against gays and lesbians. Sierra Leone has begun celebrations in the run-up to declaring the country free of Ebola on Saturday. But medical workers say that up to 80% of people who survived the virus are suffering complications such as joint pains and fatigue. An American teenager, abducted by his father when he was five, has been found 13 years later. Julian Hernandez was given an assumed name after his father moved him to Cleveland, Ohio, more than 1,100 kilometers away. The FBI was called in and his father arrested when Julian found out he was on a register of missing children. BBC News. Dr. Dabber, hurry! Its temperature is shooting past 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's burning up! I'm afraid for this little guy, it's just too late. What caused the problem? Only Dr. Dabber can maintain the perfect temperature for a smooth-tasting, slower burn. This standard vaporizer lost all of its health benefits, sending it up in smoke. So you're telling me that most vapor pens burn so hot they produce smoke, not vapor? Correct! Keep away from those standard vaporizer pens and turn to Dr. Dabber, doctor's order. Less heat, <laughs> From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Kate Fisher. British Prime Minister David Cameron will hold talks with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi on Thursday at Downing Street, just a day after the UK halted all flights into the Red Sea resort of Sharm el-Sheikh amid security concerns. British officials now say there is a significant possibility that an explosive device brought down the Russian Metrojet plane that crashed in the Sinai on Saturday, killing all 224 people on board. From London, Catherine Drew reports. The move to halt all UK flights to Sharm el-Sheikh, a favourite with British tourists, is a significant blow to Egypt's vital tourism industry and an embarrassment for the Egyptian authorities. All flights were suspended after a team of British security experts analysed security at the airport Wednesday, prompting the government to advise against all but essential travel through the airport. Travel advice for the region, though, has not changed. This is likely to dominate talks at Downing Street as the two leaders meet to discuss security concerns relating to Islamic State militants and the situation in Syria and Iraq. The talks have been criticised by human rights campaigners who describe President Sisi as a dictator who has violently cracked down on dissent. US intelligence sources are also saying that they believe a bomb planted by ISIS or an affiliate may have been responsible for downing the flight. In Washington, here's Kevin McAleese. The US position that Islamic extremists may have planted a bomb on the aircraft echoed earlier analysis from the United Kingdom. An unidentified source told CNN a device may have been planted in luggage or somewhere on the plane. However, US State Department spokesman John Kirby, when pressed on who or what was responsible for the crash, insisted the US government would not be rushed to judgment. Everybody would like to have answers as soon as possible, most especially the families that are grieving. But the investigators are still at it, and we got to give them the time and the space to do their job. This new assessment came after the White House addressed concerns over U.S. citizens traveling to the region, making it clear that U.S. airliners did not operate over the area affected by Saturday's air disaster. 
U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter and his Malaysian counterpart are planning to sail aboard a U.S. warship that has been patrolling in disputed waters of the South China Sea. The move underscores regional tensions over China's territorial claims there. Daniel Wrenches reports from Washington. Ashton Carter and the Malaysian Defence Minister Hishamuddin Hussein will sail on board the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the USS Theodore Roosevelt, on Thursday. It follows on directly from a meeting of regional defence ministers in Malaysia in which differences appeared over China's maritime territorial claims. US warships recently sailed within disputed waters. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSM. Mexico's Supreme Court has ruled that people should have the right to grow marijuana for personal use. The decision doesn't change the current law, but it does lay the groundwork for legal changes in the future. Andrea Arenas reports. Today's ruling could start a wave of legal actions aimed at relaxing legislation against people who want to grow marijuana for personal consumption, as well as those who need to use the plant for medicinal purposes. The Supreme Court took on this case as a result of an appeal filed by a marijuana advocacy group. The group had previously been denied its request to grow the plant for recreational purposes. Experts say the ruling may lead to a reduction in drug-related violence in Mexico, where the illegal drug trade is ruled by gangs. Andrea Arenas, Washington. Facebook has released earnings for the third quarter, announcing that over a billion people use the social media site every day. And with revenue also beating Wall Street estimates, Facebook's founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg called it a good quarter. William Denslow has more from New York. Last month, Facebook announced it would invest more in its family of apps, including WhatsApp, Messenger and Instagram, to boost advertising revenue. And that investment appears to be paying off. Ad revenue was up at $4.3 billion this quarter, especially boosted by Facebook's video advertising. Thanks to spending on projects like virtual reality, costs and expenses for Facebook were up at 68% from last year. But total revenue was still up 41% at $4.5 billion. Monthly active user growth was also up 14% from last year, with over 1.5 billion people using the site each month, with over a billion people now logging on each day. William Denslow, New York. And that's the latest feature story news. Kate Fisher reporting. How high do you like your profit margin? CannabisRadio.com From the Sky News Centre at 6. All flights to Sharm el-Sheikh have been suspended indefinitely amid fears a plane that crashed in Egypt on Saturday was brought down by a bomb. Officials in the US and the UK say it's possible the Russian jet was hit by an explosion. Egypt's foreign minister has described the decision as premature and unwarranted, but the foreign secretary, Philip Hammond, stands by it. With respect to him, he hasn't seen all the information that we have, and while we regard the Egyptians as very important partners, we want to work with them, When we see something which we believe represents a threat to British nationals, we have to act on it. The government's now advising against all but essential travel through the resort's airport. The Foreign Secretary says measures are being put in place to get around 20,000 British tourists home safely. Doctors have started being balloted for strike action a day after the promise of a pay rise from the health secretary. Following a long-running row with junior doctors, Jeremy Hunt said some of them in England would get an 11% increase in basic pay. His claim personal trainers should be put into job centres and GP surgeries to get people doing more exercise. UK Active, which is funded by charities, councils and gyms, thinks the government needs a better strategy to tackle the inactivity pandemic. Chelsea's under-pressure manager Jose Mourinho has thanked the club's fans who sung his name throughout what could turn out to be a big win in the Champions League last night. They beat Dynamo Kiev 2-1 at Stamford Bridge. With Chelsea, this is my moment because it was amazing. So I think the club has to be very proud of uh, their fans. I don't have another way to thank them than give everything I have, which I did always, which I will do always. Arsenal's hopes of reaching the last 16 look precious after they were thrashed 5-1 at Bayern Munich. And England's cricketers are just beginning their last push to win the final test against Pakistan in Sharjah. They resume on the final day on 46 for 2, needing another 238 runs to win. That's the latest. I'm Simon English. 
Your connection to quality cannabis insurance services is spelled K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R. That's Karcher Insurance. We have worked with ventures like cannabis for over 60 years. We're proud to represent over 50 companies with tailor-made cannabis plans for owners just like you to ensure your product, your plants, and your pursuits. K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R spells out their full service insurance services, ranging from commercial to bonds to personal, from life to health, and more. Contact the team at KarcherInsurance.com and let our experience work for you. That's K-A-E-R-C-H-E-R Insurance.com. Contact Karen and the team at Karcher Insurance at 1-844-421-3560. That's 844-421-3560. MJWellness.com, the largest medical marijuana community in the world. Connect with thousands of patients, doctors, industry leaders, and businesses through shared personal experiences along our worldwide network. Discover new therapies and benefits with content tailored to you. Come grow your network on mjwellness.com. You're not alone. Your wellness matters. Learn, live, and thrive. Check out mjwellness.com today. We have your smoking section right here. This is the Cannabis Radio Network. This is the USA Radio Business Report. I'm Russ Jones. Federal regulators are hitting Japanese airbag maker Takata with the largest fine in the history of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. NHTSA Administrator Mark Rosekind announced the penalty. Takata agrees to pay the largest civil penalty in NHTSA's history, $200 million. It must pay $70 million in cash and remaining amounts if it violates the terms of NHTSA orders, Takata will have to phase out and recall all the defective airbag inflators that have been known to rupture. Officials are also accelerating recalls of the defective airbags. It orders the 12 manufacturers that have issued Takata recalls to complete those recalls on an accelerated schedule and to prioritize vehicles based on risk. More than 19 million vehicles in the U.S. have already been recalled over the issue. This is the USA Radio Business Report. I'm Russ Jones. USA Radio News, I'm Anthony Lucero. Officials say a student armed with a hunting knife stabbed four people at the University of California at Merced before being shot dead by campus police. All of the victims are expected to recover. A suspect is under arrest in the stabbing of a man who stopped a terrorist gunman on a French train. Sacramento police say James Tran is facing attempted murder charges for stabbing Spencer Stone. He was stabbed during a fight outside a Sacramento bar last month. Authorities in Illinois are calling the shooting death of a police officer a suicide staged to look like a murder. The Lake County Major Crimes Task Force says an overwhelming amount of evidence shows Lieutenant Charles Joseph Glenowitz took his own life after committing extensive criminal acts. The officer was found shot to death on September 1st after he radioed in to say he was chasing three suspects on foot. You're listening to USA Radio News powered by westernjournalism.com. Hi, I'm Joan London. When I needed to find senior care for my mom, I really struggled to find the right fit until I found an advisor, someone who had been through this before. That's why I recommend A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. They have experts who will help you ask the right questions and find the right place. Call A Place for Mom today. To speak with the local senior living advisor, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-469-7591. That's 1-800-469-7591. A Place for Mom has helped over 200,000 families find the right senior care for their parents, from assisted living to independent living, even Alzheimer's care, and have local advisors that can help explain your options at no cost to you. To speak with the local senior living advisor, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-469-7591. That's 1-800-469-7591. Call today. As the investigation continues into the cause of the crash of a Russian passenger jet over Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, there is growing speculation that it was a bomb. USA's John Clemens reports. At the time of the jetliner crash that claimed the lives of 224 people, a U.S. military satellite detected a heat flash but found no evidence of a missile attack, which leaves open the possibility of a bomb or massive mechanical failure. 
Patrick McLaughlin is the UK Secretary of State for Transport. We cannot categorically say uh, why the Russian jet uh, crashed, but we have become concerned.